Well, lots of folks back east, they say they're leaving their homes most every day. They're making their hot old dusty way out to the California line. Welcome to the Canadian Folk Music Awards Artist Showcase Series. And uh, we're here interviewing uh, some of the nominees for uh, the Canadian Folk Music Awards, uh, which are happening here uh, in St. John in the, uh, New Brunswick. And the interviews are happening right here in the Delta Hotel. And uh, today we've got uh, an old buddy of mine. Really glad to see him again. I know him as Peter Hodgson, but most of you would know uh, about him uh, by the name of Sneezy Waters. So Sneezy, welcome, uh, and congratulations on your nomination. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm thrilled to be nominated, to tell you the truth. Uh, particularly, a traditional singer is, uh, means a lot to me. As I look through the want ads every day And the headlines on the papers always say Hey, if you ain't got the do re me boys If you ain't got the do re me well, then you better get back to Prince Edward Island, Truro, Bathurst, Stephenville, even up to Miramichi. Cause Toronto is a Garden of Eden. Yes, sir, Turkey Town, it's a great place to get a massage, a record contract, or just to see. But believe it or not, you won't find it that hard if you ain't got that door in me. Help me see that. In the early 70s, I was doing a lot. Uh, let's back up for a little bit from that. I had a group called Rosewood Daydream. Right. We went playing around to Southeast Asia for Southeast Asia for 14 months, and then we and I ended up back in, actually in Newfoundland, and did a little uh, mind adjustment down there because I was a little travel fatigued. And then when I came back to Ottawa, I started uh, singing on the street. Uh, right. Nobody was doing that in, in Ottawa at the time. It um, said that you were the first busker in Ottawa. I believe, I believe that I, I, that's true. And I was singing on the, uh, on the Spark Street Mall. Okay, let's flash forward then into the, the 90s. You, uh, uh, you did a couple of records in the 90s, I think. Uh, and the last one was around 97, I think. Yeah, I had a, an album I did called A Letter Home, mm -hmm. uh, which I have to repress, actually. Uh, oh, that's good. I worked with uh, with a uh, with a couple of guys. Uh, I worked with uh, Bill Stunt out of CBC in Ottawa, and I ended up uh, leasing that album from them. I uh, had a very good uh, rhythm section, and very good. And I had uh, two guys who uh, Brian Magdar and Bill and uh, Bill Rowe at uh, horns, uh, trumpet and sax, and they doubled and doubled and tripled and. Play, he did, played tenor and Barry, and so we had a, it's a really punchy, I was thinking of kind of radio play album, yeah. the songs are real high energy and uh, really in your face punchy, lots of unison horn lines and stuff. In, in fact, there are a lot of folks, old folk songs on that one as well, but we just treated them that way. And it was after that, I guess, that you uh, sort of refocused uh, your life a little bit and you went and did a lot of work in theater as an IATSE stage crew member, and uh, and uh, that went on for a few years. In the early 80s, after the Hank show, I went back because I've always had a, 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 a union stagehand card, and and the money the money is good, and also I was getting to see everybody from oh geez, I had I had a little you know from, from the Who to to ballet, to opera. Working operas was great. I love working operas. So hearing all that fabulous music. You are my flower that's blooming on the mountain so high. So what prompted you to get back into full-time performing? I was losing, I've lost a lot of friends as you have, I'm sure. People that you know in the business, people who have died either of old age but in a lot of cases died too young mm -hmm. and uh, ever since I was a choir boy in St. Luke's Anglican Church I've always considered myself as a singer and uh, so I said time's a waste I said when you when you hit 65 you better be playing and not doing all this unloading trucks and doing follow spot and stuff like that. And then last year you did this album, Sneezy Waters, a self-titled album. 
And it's a great album. It's got a great mixture of traditional uh, uh, music, uh, hence the nomination for Traditional Album of the Year. Congratulations again. But it's a real mixture of material too, some original material and so on. Uh, and, uh, but musically, I think it stays pretty close to a traditional sound. There's a lot of good sidemen on this and players. But Ian had an idea of keeping it within a kind of a, it, there's a, mostly acoustic on there. Mm -hmm. And he really worked on my singing. Uh, in other words, when I was singing on the street before, I, I used to project through my nose. And, and also in the days when there weren't monitors or when you really had to hear yourself. And I'd be singing a lot. You have this nasal sound, which sort of pa pass for country music. <laughs> And, and cut through uh, all the clinking of glasses and that. So he worked on me more, like uh, took me back to when I was singing bass and on the choir to get your voice down here where you're singing, and you're singing more. Uh, and he'd say to me, if I was going the other way, he'd say, you've got quite a nose, <laughs> you know? And I go, oh, geez. Sneezy, there's one particular song in here which, I, which captivated me in particular, and that's Imitation to the Blues by Tom Waits. You know, part of the thing I think is maybe what helps, I've got to, I've got to learn to understand it, is part of my appeal in, when I'm singing to people is that I can get into the emotion of the song. And uh, it ha those songs have to be something that I can really relate to, of course. And that was, a, that was a kind of a song that uh, just uh, took me away. Now that's an early Tom Waits song. There was that one that was Drunk on the Moon and, and Heart of Saturday Night and those songs. I really, I really related to them. Now there's a continental trailways leaving local bus tonight. You can have my seat, cause I'm sticking around here for a while. I'll get me a room down at Squires, and the filling station's hiring. And I can eat here every night, what the hell have I got to lose? I got this crazy sensation. Go or stay, and I've got to choose, and I'll accept your invitation to the blues.